Hello, this is Jason Keller with Total Tech Resource Corporation. Today I'm going to take you into a preview of Nintex Workflow 2010. And what we'll do is we'll get started and go over the, the workflow design canvas and looking at some of the workflow options that are available in the Nintex Workflow 2010 product. So to get started, uh, one of the great aspects of Nintex is that it's actually contained within SharePoint. So by simply navigating to like a list or a library or a content type, you can actually go ahead and build your workflow uh, directly in SharePoint. As an example here, we have a lead request uh, list in uh, SharePoint 2010. So we'll just go ahead and click on that list and we can go ahead and go to the list ribbon here. One of the nice things is, is that Nintex actually extends the functionality that you have in SharePoint 2010. There's no additional ribbons or, or buttons or anything like that with uh, Nintex Workflow 2010. Actually, they've built in the functionality to exist within the foundation and the infrastructure that's already here in SharePoint 2010. As an example, we have our workflow settings right here. As you can see, if you're familiar with workflow in 2010, these top four options are already out of the box part of SharePoint 2010. However, if you see these two additional items, creating a workflow in Nintex Workflow 2010 and managing a workflow in Nintex Workflow, these are two additional options that come when you have Nintex Workflow installed. We'll just go ahead and create a new workflow. Again, we're not leaving SharePoint at all. We're actually still in SharePoint. This is a, a great differentiator over some of the other products that are out there. One of the reasons why I really like uh, Nintex Workflow 2010. The first thing that will come up is that it asks you actually for a little wizard here. From here, you can choose uh, several different templates. Uh, we have blank, we have business management and finance. These are basically templates that you can already build your workflow from. As an example, there's a travel request workflow here. However, you might want to use this for another type of business process. You just really like the way this workflow uh, flows. So you can go ahead and use that as an example, change it, customize it for your own needs. We have a, a few other areas like human resource, uh, so for annual leave requests, employee benefits, job recs. Uh, operations in IT, so as an example, a help desk uh, ticket or um, enabling OCS AD accounts, things of that nature. We have some project management tools here and then some sales and marketing. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, let's just go ahead and select blank and we'll just go ahead and create. So again, still in SharePoint 2010, haven't left the, the environment at all. What we have here is our designer canvas over here on the right-hand side, and we have workflow actions on the left-hand side. Uh, we can go ahead and expand this area here uh, so that we can, uh, let's see here, there we go. We expand it. Uh, these are all the workflow actions or basically like little bits of uh, functionality or business process that you can go ahead and use in Nintex workflow. It's about 120 of these guys right out of the box here. Um, just so that you know, we are demonstrating Nintex workflow 2010 enterprise edition. Um, so let's go ahead and go through uh, some of these little workflow actions here. Uh, first, we have some commonly used uh, workflow actions. It's an example, uh, sending a notification, setting a condition, assigning a task to somebody. So these are uh, workflow actions that we pretty much use in almost every workflow. Under HR, this is in our demo environment, we actually have two user-defined actions. Basically, these are workflows that have been packaged up for reuse in uh, this particular demo environment. Uh, so these do not come out of the box, but this just shows you the extensibility of the product where you can actually go in and build little bits of workflow and then integrate it within the workflow actions tab here so that you have uniformity across the organization. Uh, these two items here are getting leave balance and updating leave balance. These are some workflow actions that communicate with like web services to like an ERP system to get an employee's leave balance and then bring that information back into Nintex to be used in a workflow. So uh, very cool features that you can go ahead and build uh, directly in uh, Nintex Workflow 2010. Here's some integration workflow actions. So as you can see, uh, the web service, uh, being able to integrate with uh, CRM, this is a feature of the SharePoint 2010 
project and explicitly in enterprise license. Uh, executing SQL, you can actually query the BCS, you can query search results and uh, XML user profile. The user profile one is very useful. I've used this in quite a few workflows for clients where somebody wants to go ahead and query the person's title and include that in a workflow data or make a decision based off of their title in a workflow. Very nice feature to have here. Listen libraries will show you uh, common features that uh, you would use to just interact with your list or library. So as an, as an example, checking an item in, checking an item out, converting documents, copying items, updating items, deleting items, querying items, things of that nature. Uh, it's very useful. I use these uh, on a day-to-day -day basis with my customers. Logic and flow. This is where we might see a little bit of the more programmatic oriented uh, workflow action, uh, actions right here as well as in operations. Um, but these are basically uh, state machine workflows, action sets for each loops, run if statements, um, state machine. It's, most of these can be configured out of the box just by your normal average power user. Uh, if you actually have a programmer, they can even extend these a little bit further. But for all intents and purposes, uh, most of these options right here are, are very easy to use just for anybody without them having to be a uh, computer wizard. So your, your SharePoint power users, they'll be able to use these features right out of the box. Operations, this will show uh, a little bit more complex workflow options like building strings. Uh, you see a user-defined actions here for calculating business days, collections from strings, um, ability to convert values. Uh, some of these ob objects are, are really easy to use. Other ones, uh, you might take a little bit more technical knowledge, but overall not hard to use at all. Provisioning allows you to uh, work with uh, like Active Directory, uh, being able to provision accounts, enabling OCS, updating users' profile, creating sites, uh, creating site collections, deleting sites, decommissioning sites. Uh, very useful uh, workflow actions in there. And then we also have user interaction. These are really great. You have workflow actions like creating tasks, assigning to do tasks, collecting feedback, uh, requesting data, sending notifications. Uh, here's one that's uh, very popular. It's a create an appointment. It's uh, actually a connector that connects with um, Exchange so that if somebody um, like accepts a workflow uh, option that it would go ahead and update their calendar with uh, appointment information, things like that. So very commonly used. And over here on the right hand side, we actually have our workflow canvas, which in our next segment, we'll go ahead and actually build a workflow. Uh, some other items that I wanted to showcase across the top, the ability to zoom in and zoom out. This is new to the SharePoint 2010 product. It's very nice to have, uh, especially when you have a pretty big workflow. You can also hit the 100% and brings it right back into, into view. The ability to import and export. So uh, you can go ahead and export directly uh, for import into another uh, site or site collections. Very, very useful for uh, migrating workflows between like a test and a production environment. Uh, then you can easily import as well. You can import the Visual Studio, but the, only in a reusable workflow space. So if you create a workflow that um, you want to use across multiple site collections across the farm, you can go ahead and uh, export those to Visual Studio and make changes to them. Uh, also, one of the things I like to showcase is the open. <laughs> Uh, the open feature will actually show you any lists or any workflows that you have on that list or library. You notice there's already a workflow here. It's called approve leave request. Notice I'm just going to hit this little plus sign here. Notice there's multiple versions of this workflow. What's great about uh, Nintex is it actually leverages a lot of the SharePoint functionality that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. In this case, version control in libraries. So in, in this example, you can see that there's 10 different versions of this workflow um, created. And when you see a major version, that's when something's been published minor is when you've just made changes to items. All right, so that's going to do it just for a quick high-level overview of the Nintex workflow canvas and workflow actions. And our next workflow example will actually show you how to create a basic workflow using Nintex Workflow 2010. Thank you very much.